In this video, we are going to cover rafter ties. This is a two car garage and the rafter ties are going to be these two by fours here represented in the illustration. They will be spaced. Uh, or I shouldn't say they will be. They can be spaced 48 inches on center. Uh, these are two 24 inch on center rafters. So every other one would be would have a rafter tie attached to it. And if it was 16 inches on center, it would be every third one. And a rafter tie is actually used to keep the walls from bowing. It actually ties the, how the collar tie is used to tie the rafters together at the ridge and to prevent them from separating. The rafter ties are used basically in the lower area to prevent the rafters from separating here. Without the rafter ties, and I've seen this plenty of times, the wall will actually bow. Uh, the ends aren't going to bow. The top plate gives you a nice solid tie here from one end to the other. So you're not gonna have a problem here. It's gonna be in the center. And you're gonna just be kind of a gradual bow back into the sides and usually when it bows the the ridge sags so if you've ever seen a ridge sagging and i believe i have a video on that maybe i'll put a link in there to the video here but the ridge will sag normally and that's because there are no rafter ties or uh, somehow it wasn't uh, constructed correctly now they can be located in the lower third area of the roof and I, I put these little uh, markers here to represent the lower third area. If you were going to measure from the top plate to the top of the ridge, this distance right here, you just divide it by three. For example, if it's 60 inches, top of the ridge to the top of the top plates, you divide that by three, that would give you three 20 inch uh, increments. And then you would just put the or the rafter ties in the lower area. Now it's going to be common, I should say, it's going to be more common to have it built where the rafter ties will sit on top of the framing plates and tie all the way over to the other side. And usually it's going to have two toenails going in from the rafter tie into the top plates and about probably about uh, three to four nails going into the rafter itself and that usually gives it a, a nice solid tie because that's actually tying from plate to plate and tying the rafters together. The boards on the top here are basically strong backs. They are used to provide more support for the rafter ties to keep them from moving. I mean you can just imagine the pressure that might be put on these if you didn't have a strong back here you could have a lot of pressure on these. These could actually bow uh, either up or down, allowing the walls to uh, to pull out um, a little. Uh, and again, that's prob I'm probably exaggerating here because this, this should be enough. If there was some type of upward movement, you might have that. But uh, these, you're not gonna see them in every building, but uh, you do see them a lot. So forget what I just said in there, huh? That could be, could, could, it might not be a problem. Because like I said, you might, in a situation where you have a 20-foot garage, you might only have one, one uh, strong back, or you might have two, but they're maybe spaced in one-third of the span uh, kind of thing. And other than that, I really can't think of much more to say about these things, except for they are not ceiling joists. Do not forget that. They are not... Uh, you don't need you're not supposed to put store stuff on top of them it's kind of going around here give you an idea what, what you're looking at you're not supposed to store things uh, on them they're like I said they are not used for structural supports they are used for they are used to prevent the walls from bowing and the ridge from sagging. Other than that, that is it. Off to the next video.